It's Patrick Mahomes. And I think that's a great way to end this. The guy's a freaking goat. He's unfucking, and I will cuss, believable. <laughs> Calm Down with Aaron and Carissa is a production of iHeartRadio. I was going to play Usher. What'd you think? I think it's very difficult to dance as much as he does and sing. Because he's such a good dancer, I felt like the emphasis was on the dancing and I wanted more of the singing. But I really like the end. Luda. Luda, little and John. Jermaine, was it? Little John. Yeah, it was great. Is it Little John? I know it's not Little Wayne. People are going to be like, Jesus, you don't know the difference. I, I just like the music. It was okay? great. Hey, hey. <laughs> Come and get me. You know what Usher reminds me of? Usher, Usher reminds me of, and I have the picture of it because my old college roommate randomly sent it to me. She because she heard me talking about working at Cheesecake Factory. Whenever uh that song, hey, when I, oh, mm, 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 come and get me. That song yeah. reminds me of bartending. I it's was called, a bartender yeah, when that not song. Hey. Um, well, I was singing the words. Oh, <laughs> But that song reminds me of bartending and that it came out it, when I was in college, 2004, I think is the, the year. And it also reminds me of the movie Hitch. Oh. Have you seen Hitch nope, with Will Smith? have not. <gasps> Come on. That's a good one. Okay, keep it down. You know, we aren't going to keep down though. We are not going to calm down because Taylor Swift was wearing wear by Aaron Andrews in the Super Bowl. What a way to put an exclamation point on the football season, sister. You must have, well, I know because you sent us the text, but, and I wasn't in front of the TV at the time. When you saw her wearing the jacket, pun intended, what did you think and do? And I'm just so proud of you. Love you. And again, people I'm sure are like, oh, and again, rolling the eyes. No, but like don't care. really, really quick. And this isn't a poor me thing. You guys have got to understand when you are, when you've gotten so many no's and you have been told by so many people, eh, you're not really that big of a name. We'll try this. It's really probably going to only last for a couple of years. And then, you know, these things don't usually last. It's like, this just felt so damn good. It also, we started this, like, last night I was thinking about it as I was, like, looking through all these pictures and emails. We started this at a Super Bowl, drunk at dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, myself, Corral Chen, Jose Diaz, we were, like, writing on a on a freaking tablecloth this idea. It took us five, six years for somebody to even listen to us. Now we're still getting, you know, like, eh, 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 you're asking too much, you're, you yeah. know. So whatever. I, it's just, it's just... It's been amazing. And I was boarding a flight. I was leaving Vegas. Sherm was on my flight. And yeah, sweet, um, I was trying to watch the coverage because I hated like actually traveling the day of the Super Bowl and not being in front of it. I like, mm -hmm. I look at the coverage as Christmas Day. I really do. Yeah. I love to sit there. I love to enjoy it, all that stuff. And I saw her walk in. I, and I, I never thought in a million years. I was just kind of like, oh, I wonder what she's wearing. So cute. I, I just kind of thought yeah. enough is enough. She's done ours already. She wore a little cute dog tag. And then I saw her walk in and I was like, wait, what? And then she had it in her little hand. I was like, huh? And I'm trying to board. I'm trying to board the airline. And then I'm like, what? And then oh I was like, God. I'm on a text chain with a couple of my girls from where. And I just said, you guys... And Lauren Fenner, who works with me and works her ass off for this brand, and I'm yes. so grateful and actually sent that Lauren. damn package with everything in it at the beginning of this mm -hmm. season. She goes, it's ours. And I was like, I oh. just started crying. And I had all my makeup on from the event I did. Sherm was in the row next to me, and I was crying. And I was just like, and I'm tired. And it's just like, it was just a kick-ass way to just end the season for our crew and like our wear crew and like help us figure out how we're going to navigate this thing moving forward because just because she did this doesn't mean we're like we want to get bigger we want to get better we want to serve other people and all this stuff so it was really fucking awesome I looked over at Sherm he's like you good and I was like Taylor Swift's wearing my jacket to the Super Bowl Aww. and he's like that's awesome and whatever yeah. I texted you and Steve and we were losing our mind it was just really friggin thoughtful cool can't say it enough women supporting women she knows exactly what she's doing I'm just so grateful. And everybody's done listening to me on it. No, uh, you know what? I'm going to stop you right there because, and I appreciate this because I do the same thing where we feel like we have to downplay or not build up, but it, we're going to make this like we have done throughout the season, not because 
we get it. We love Taylor Swift, but because of what she stands for and what sort of this whole, th- this season sort of has summarized and been summarized by, oh, she's a distraction or Travis is this, <laughs> or the Chiefs or the old Chiefs who they used to be. And, then, and by the way, to quote her here, karma is her boyfriend because for those guys out on that field and them putting in the work and you heard Patrick Mahomes say that the other three, this is the most gratifying mm. because of the w- the road that they had to take and going literally on the road and winning those playoff games. Anyways, we'll get to all that in a second, but it's weird. And, not, and we are not those women that always like, you know, beat that feminist drama We're not. because we, we work with all these men. And sometimes when you go so hard, it feels like you're bashing yeah. men and it's not that, nope. but there is a time and a place. <clears throat> and if I were a man, they wouldn't have to stand there with the caveat or start this conversation and be like, hey, I'm sorry to bring this up. Taylor Swift is the biggest superstar in the world. And she is wearing your jacket that you have put blood, sweat, tears, money, not just you, your whole crew into for the last five, six years. And to have it culminate in that, I think that you just really should be proud of yourself and you shouldn't have to have a caveat for it because that is a massive thing. Do you know how many people we know that say they want to do something and they don't you've actually done it and i just think that you should really sit back and like realize and be proud of yourself and be okay with that and not feel like you have to downplay it because i'm so fucking proud of you love you it's really really cool. no i appreciate it it's so funny like we're all in the in our little office here today and we're just sending we've been sending emails back and forth since 6 a.m and it's like you thought this was kind of supposed to be your off day but when somebody like her does this it's like okay Again, how do we how do we, you know, keep the momentum going? How do we build off of this? How does this open doors other places with the brand? So it's really, really cool. And yeah, I'm just going to keep talking about her. She's adorable. We've been sending each other uh, DMs all day of the snippets mm-hmm. of her partying with her man. We talked about this after the AFC championship, and we were like, good for you going down on that field and being with your man. You know, she's been to all the award shows. She's been to the premieres. But you and I can say she's never been to a Super Bowl celebration with her boyfriend no. winning it. You and I have been around it before because we do this for a living. That's our realm. I will say this. It's a fucking time. And time. I'm so glad for mm-hmm. her. She, again, just busted her ass in Tokyo. Now I think she's got to go to Australia. She's back on tour. She was dancing. She couldn't have been cuter with her song, you know, blasting. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just, I, I love it. It's a love it. story. It's a, like how cute, cute they both were. Yeah. And you belong to me and like all those different little things. But for me, when watching those or watching Adele. I love Adele where she's like, all of y'all that like, you know, want to say something about Taylor Swift. Like, yeah. what I loved about this whole thing is it goes back to, you can be the biggest superstar. I've said this a million times, but I'll say it again. You could be the biggest star in the world or you can be, you know, Travis, he's a future Hall of Famer and now he's a three-time Super Bowl champion. So cool. But when you get to do it with someone and you get to have that, person there with you that's like rooting you and cheering you on and rooting for you and running to like each other at the end of the game and just having that moment like I have had a lot of times in my life that I've had like not like that not winning a Super Bowl but like big moments in my life that I haven't had that person that I don't make me cry like that I'm excited to like run up and hug at the end of it like what's it all for if you don't have someone to share it with so what i think is really sweet is i think about them where it's like here she is she just won what is album of the year goes bust her ass in tokyo which by the way can we talk about how this chick probably got through jet lag i mean the adrenaline has to be running because I know people that complain about going East Coast to West Coast. I complain about going (laughs) out. Like Taylor's rocking Tokyo. Now she's back at the Super Bowl in Vegas out at the wind partying. You Multiple shows, three hours a night. She gets her cute little butt back on that plane and celebrates with him. And I just think that uh, I had mentioned it in the pregame a little bit, but for both of them, where there's all these pundits and like for, you know, Travis and for the Chiefs and whatnot, it's like, oh, they're not the same Chiefs of old and this is a distraction and enough about Taylor. It's got to be such a great, like, like you can still be at the height of your career, have fun, be authentically you. Travis up there saying Viva Las Vegas or, you know, any of his cute little things. And you can still win. You don't have to be this certain way or you can be her and chugging a beer or wine or whatever she was on the Jumbotron. It's like, 
authenticity is something that resonates with me. And so when people are authentically themselves and they have success, good for you. Now, on the other side of that, just because I'm excited for Travis and Taylor and like the Chiefs doing things that, uh, you know, even talking about going for a 3P is awesome because we don't get a lot of chances in our lives to see things like that. But San Francisco, my heart hurt for them too. And we've talked about it and you, you know, have spent so much time with this team. Um, There's always got to be that other side of the coin. And I feel terrible. I was so sad for Kyle Shanahan. You and I were texting throughout the game for those guys, the Trent Williams and, and even for Christian McCaffrey, all the stories leading up to the week about, you know, his hero's dad's won three. And I don't know. Anyways, I'll shut up. But I just... I'm sad that there has to be a loser um, in those kinds of games because you know how hard they all work. I know. I I I go in, I root for the guys and, I, you know, d- different guys that I have relationships f- with and good games and fun commercials and good broadcasts. And then at the end of it, I'm just like, I'm the worst sports fan because I don't want anyone to lose. I felt so bad for those 49ers. I kept saying to Jarrett, like, how do we go back next season? It's the same story, you know, unfinished business. Mm-hmm. And, so close. Oh, mm-hmm. my heart just hurts for those guys a lot. And um, yeah. It's the business. It's the game. It's the awful side of it. I absolutely hate it. Um, but there is always going to be a loser, obviously. Um, wait, I want to bring up the point. Sorry, everyone hates us. Going back to Taylor, you mentioned the drink in care. your hand. You if you don't want to hear about Taylor, you Fast should be forward. listening to yeah. this podcast. By actually. the way, two things on her. My first one is uh, Colin Cowherd got involved. Charles Barkley got involved. Adele. A little like, late, Colin. Yeah, well, he realized it brings you ratings. There you go. Hey, Ryan. Um, so, um, um, I, I do love how it did bring kind of a group together that was like, no, it's like so much fun to have young girls involved with this. There was a commercial I sent to you yes. that I absolutely died for it, where the dad's wearing Sad friendship so. bracelets. Mm-hmm. And I just thought it was really cool to see people come together. Um, even Stephen A. Smith saying, you got to get a life if this bothers you. Now, our girl, even though, again, we we haven't hung out with her. London, we're manifesting London. Taylor, putting it out there. Um, our girl, she lives her life. You mentioned her having a drink in her hand, Dirk Bentley. I loved love it. it. So I love, love it. it. Every shot, she's got a drink. She's having a time, and she should because she works her ass off. Ass off. Exactly. And that's, I think, for so you fun. and I. I'll speak for myself. I don't want to speak for you. There has been many times that I have felt bad for, because it's no mystery. Your gal likes to have a good time. Eric Church. Sorry, it wasn't Dirk Bentley. All I want to do is have a drink in my hand. A drink in my hand. Sorry. Um, Good good memory, though. But I have felt bad sometimes when I'm like, oh, God, I shouldn't be doing that. Now, again, things in moderation. But I just think that she is someone who, to your point, has worked her ass off, has hit her, has hit, literally hit away, hide, uh, whatever, can I speak? I can't, has went into isolation for a whole year. Didn't like, no one saw her. And now she's front and center, not because she wants to be, because she wants to support her boyfriend. And it just so happens that her boyfriend is also the same great freaking personality, Mm -hmm. which is why I love these two together because, and I mentioned it, like, authentically them like they don't have to temper it she's not tempering like having a good time you know who i i, I gotta talk to the security guards and i gotta talk to her when in our long conversation right, in london with her. yeah mm-hmm. the security guards a very interesting thing because they're always gonna be around right and so like in the clips you see it's like do you i know travis obviously can like fend for himself and protect her but like does she always have to have them? Like, when are you like, hey, guys, take the so. night off? I know she has she to, She has right? to. People are nuts. And especially you I and I know. can appreciate this. I didn't... Well, you did. I... I had someone following me, not outside my house, just outside my hotel door. I mean, she's had her mm-hmm. run-ins with stalkers. And I... You know this yeah. as well. Anyone yeah. that's dealt with stalking, it's... It haunts you forever. So, yeah, oh, she does. no. I mean, I had to move. Yeah, yeah I get it. We, I mean, you and I have had the same experience in very different ways, but that idea where it's like, you know, thank God I wasn't at my house, but yeah, on the video camera, on the security cameras, you see him trying to break in. But I, I just mean like, 
when they're out that night, like in the club where it's like, and if he's with her, I don't know. Yeah, there's too I many just, that's crazies. That's such a weird... And it's probably yeah, a way she can put her hair down. Wait, I want to say this. I, her hair, her hair <laughs> looked great. Look great. I, I have questions great about pony. the braid. Like, the tw- is it twist and the braid? Great pony. And the bangs. <gasps> Okay, wait, you say your thing and then I have another so question. So I was laughing because, you know, she's at his celebration and it's so cute. And they play her song and she's, you know, I'll be the prince and you it was just so cute. And I was thinking about, you know, because I'm on Taylor Swift's level with Travis Kelsey when Jarrett won and we all went to a local bar here with the cop and everybody was sitting around and singing and dancing. And I'm like... <laughs> I remember sitting on the top of a ledge at this like hometown bar we have here and it was like let's hear it for the boys and I was like wow our <laughs> celebrations for the Los Angeles Kings and Kansas City Chiefs Aaron and Jarrett versus Taylor and Travis style completely <laughs> different oh knock it off I was thinking about how weird it would be if you're in this club and you hear your own music I think you're just drunk enough and you're so excited and having a time. I, I loved it. I thought it was so cute. I wonder if she, does she like, the, I don't, I have, well, we'll just add it to our list of questions. Do you not attach, like if you see yourself on TV, because this has happened before, right? I get grossed like, out. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, if I hear myself out, it's even worse. I'm like, oh my God, that's what I sound like. But I, there's almost like a detachment. If like she an wants, syndrome. she sings her songs like, like yeah. You're like, Yeah, where you're like, okay, like, that's my job. But like, that's like not me actually doing, I don't know, whatever. These are just all very interesting things. But I think that it's fantastic. Here's the question. Go. That lipstick is always intact. I know. How does she do it? So I just did this lip blush Mm -hmm. thing, which is why I have like what what we're trying to disseminate. Is it a cold sore? Is it a burn? It's not a a cold sore. But I did it because I don't want to have to the older I get, the less makeup I want to have to wear. And when it's in the off season, I want to wake up in the morning, put freaking oil on my face and be glowy and dewy and not do anything else. Like, that's just like what I want to do, a little bronze or whatever. So my lips, I notice are like always kind of like purple. Maybe I need to turn the heat up in my house. They like lose their pigmentation. So anyways, I put pigment in them and they're a little dark right now, but they're going to mellow out. My question about the lips though is, that red lipstick is never smudged. So it's great. And she, he's got a beard. And then it's like, how are we not getting this out of place? Like, how does the cat eye stay in place? And the lipstick is always perfect. I, I don't get it. Well, when you're a and goddess. And a cute little bang yeah, thing. And you rock the world. And you've always got a cocktail in your hands. Not only that, it was also, you know, Taylor and I are, are very, um, just, we're very much on the same level. When she's hugging her mans at the end, and he's just, you know. Sweating. And I man. was thinking about. Mm-hmm. Again, I've been Taylor. I get it. I've been there, hugging Jared <laughs> after they won the cup, and I was just like, oh, yeah, "I stink so bad." <laughs> like, they just <laughs> reek, and I do think hockey equipment smells a hell of a lot worse than NFL. But um, yeah, I was like, "Oh my god, you're so cute." Watch that lipstick because he is so sweaty. But that's when we're allowed to be like that. Normally in our life, and you're like running up against yeah. them to get the interview. Yeah, you're like, cares. Ugh. no one oh cares. God. But in the boyfriend, well, that was my thing when she came off the stage when he came to see her wherever it was she was in south america and i was like okay yes i will be like breath. spray the perfume yes. put the mint in then i'm gonna run to my man because i need to be fresh as a daisy after i've just done a workout for three hours that's my thing when i was watching usher at halftime how i mean i get winded trying to talk going up a flight Same. of stairs like how on the phone yeah performing for three hours yes i'll be like why am i out of breath i just walked <laughs> yeah. up the stairs three hours and dancing and singing and all of the things. Anyways, she's a time. Time. Can I skip number three and go to four in our outline? Because this goes really well with aging in the spotlight. And you just talked about like, you know, you were like, you don't want to wear a lot of makeup. Mm -hmm. I went to Vegas, um, back to Vegas on Saturday night to... Yeah, you were a little Vegas queen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I went to go work an event on uh, Sunday morning for Verizon. Super cool. Mm -hmm. Um, Who was who was there? Everybody was there. A couple guys were there and did a fun panel with them. But Saturday night, Constance, my manager, my girlfriend, was like, let's go to a fun dinner. Um, And I was Mm -hmm. like, all right, cool. We go to the Fountain Blue. We go to Mother Wolf. I've been to the one out here in LA. Mm -hmm. Great time. Um, Super low key for me. No sparkle dress here. In fact, I even have a low boot, a pant. I'm freaking good. I feel great great about myself because Mm -hmm. I do not in a dress and a heel. I'm ready to go. Um, We sit down and we are at our table 
And I swear to you, probably less than 10 feet away, the next party sits down. I looked at Constance. I just smacked the shit out of her leg. It was Paul McCartney and his wife and kids. (gasps) And it was so close to us. And can I tell you, it was like, listen, my dad's a massive Beatles fan. I mm-hmm. went to Dodger Stadium same, to see same. Paul McCartney. It was such a special moment with my parents and my sister. Look, you want to talk about freaking royalty? That is royalty. The Beatles. Not only that, Carissa, he looks phenomenal. He is 81 mm-hmm. years old. 81 years old. Incredible. Having a cocktail. They play a lot of hip-hop music at Mother Wolf. He's got his hands up, dancing. His wife is there. We looked her up. She's in her 60s. She looks fucking phenomenal and Aww. fire. They are having a great time. Their security was right next to us and their security guard was awesome. I even yeah. started to feel like I was helping him. I would see people <laughs> come and I'd slap him and I'd be like, over there. He's like, thanks. You know, like, Good. I'm sure mm-hmm. Sir Paul didn't need that. But I thought it was so badass. He was center of the restaurant. He was out in the open. None of it was like, don't Love look it. at me. Don't look at me. <sighs> because we did have another famous, very ridiculously famous couple walk right by us. And it was like, can't be bothered. Can't be bothered. Which I get it. You're super cool. You're super mm-hmm. famous. Fucking Sir Paul is over there. It was just awesome. That that would be my barometer. When I saw Taylor talking to him yeah. in the suite, I was like, that's cool. Like, because there's very few people, I'm sure for her, when you're at that level, that's like even more famous than you. Like, a member of the fucking yeah. Beatles. I don't need to swear. That's I, I, mean, I God, just did. Too. Knock it off. No, I, it, there's, it's unnecessary. But it's Paul McCartney. That's my off season goes. Sure. Yeah, but like, oh my God, that's uh, good for him. And again, good for him. I am all about that. Get out and live your life. Yeah. And he was just having a cocktail. And I said, yeah, dancing around. What was he having? What was the cocktail? Um, I couldn't tell. It. I Darn. thought it looked like a margarita, but it wasn't in a margarita glass. It was mm. in a martini. But then oh. um, I just, we all at our table were just so fanning out. We were like, this is awesome. Not so much where we were standing or staring, but we were like, this is so oh, cool. He got up, walked out. Um, Jordan, our boss, one of our executives at Fox mm-hmm. goes, my God, he walks better than I do. And he's <laughs> 30 years older. I mean, it's pretty phenomenal. He looks fantastic. It he does. Um, that's very cool though. That's there's when you talk about like celebrity yes. sightings, it's I mean, there's only a few right up there that you can be as big as Sir Paul, Paul McCartney. Yeah. Sir Paul. Um really neat. I was just thinking about like who else. I mean, rest in peace. You can the Michael Jacksons, the Whitney Houston's. Like who else I could have seen that would be like as big as that. Um, but all in all, the football season, the 2023 season, wild has come to a close. Wild. Um, when you look back on the year, and I'm putting you on the spot, but you're good at this. Ugh. Was what was sort of your takeaway? What year are we in? For I know you're a hundred twenty. I don't know. We're a hundred years into this thing. That. What, what? How would you summarize this past season? Well, for us and our crew, we had a lot of blowouts, unfortunately. We didn't really have any close games, so that was kind of a little frustrating. We were kind of like, gosh, why is everything a blowout? But then when we did have close games, it was super exciting. I mean, mm-hmm. our life really did consist of the Dallases of, of the world. Are they going to get over this hump? Dak was on such a roll, and then, you know, it obviously fell apart in the playoffs. One cool thing for us in the playoffs is Green Bay is back. We're super excited about that. Like, we're going back there. And San Francisco, just, my gosh, we still have that storyline, which is heartbreaking because they were the number one seed. I really did think that they were going to win the game. Um, But I kept saying when I would say that when I was asked at these panels, it's Patrick Mahomes, and I think that's a great way to end this. The guy's a freaking goat. He's un. Fucking, and I will cuss, believable. He is a badass and a better person. And I am so excited. I was so sad when Brady retired. Sad when Aaron left the NFC because that's what we predominantly cover on Fox. I am beyond grateful that we get to be a part of this ride with Patrick and Travis and the Chiefs. It is so fun and cool. It is, you know, it was Brady, right? Yeah. Like uh, you've you got a front row seat to a lot of that. Now, of course, you'll be working with him. But that is there's very few times whether it's was the Lakers and their you know the dynasty that was with the Celtics and um, if you're lucky enough to get a front row seat, which we are with our jobs to see that, and you know having sat down with Patrick however many different times, he is so calm he's phenomenal cool and collected i like watched him sitting on the bench and it was like this like 
la la la. Like, <laughs> like as if it's like, like he was like thinking about like, oh, look, squirrel. Like, and then he goes out there. If you give Patrick Mahomes the ball in his hand at the end of the game, chances are you're going to lose. We've seen him do it to Buffalo. We've seen him now do it again and to win three Super Bowls. And that young man is only 28 years old and you've already won three. And to uh, to his point about how this one was even more special because of the way that they had to do it and because everyone wrote them off. Um, he's now won three Super Bowl MVPs, like, you know, two league MVPs. Like this guy has done it and he continues to be classy, yeah. to be adorable. family first, to care about his teammates. And again, like him and Travis, that relationship, and I saw it this offseason, Kansas City, Rob Riggle and those all those fun comedians, Paul Rudds and Eric Stone Street and stuff, they do this great thing for Children's Mercy Hospital. And those guys always show up for it. But Kansas City is a great city. Yeah. And it reminds me a lot of, and we didn't get the we um, in Seattle, the great luxury of having the run that these guys have had. But when your city is behind yeah. you like that and you have that, like you want to win for the mm-hmm. that that town and those people and the economy of that city. And think about like everything. Um, in Kansas City is centered around that and how that parade. I kind of want to go to Kansas City just for the parade. <laughs> but um, I'm really flight. happy for those guys. I, I'm really uh, happy for them. I have to say this, too, about Patrick from our point of view. Um, he is so accessible and not all of them are. And I just I'm grateful for that with him and the time that he makes. Um, and it's even like not just the networks, like he makes time to do other interviews. Yeah. And I just think, guys, you don't get a lot of time with these guys. You just don't, mm-hmm. especially when they are the goats. And you, 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 it starts rolling as soon as they sit down. And he always makes sure you get what you need. And mm-hmm. uh, he's just great. And he's really down to earth for being someone on his level. It's cool. I'm grateful we get to cover him. It's um, yeah. Everyone, he's going to start getting that hate, though, that the Brady's and the Air Rogers yeah, get. Beat them. Beat them then. Beat them. That's what I always say. And it goes back to that whole thing of like, oh, you're sick of seeing them win. Well, they're going to win until somebody else is better. He's so and I good. think it's the op- I think it's so cool to see greatness. I, I'm too. sad that I was as young as I as young as I was. Things I don't say anymore. <laughs> that I was so young when Jordan went to say his heyday, you know, and it's just I don't know. It's really cool to see. It's one of the many reasons that we love sports. And so for me, this past year was a culmination. Yeah, sorry. What was it for you? No, no, no. I'm going to use Patrick's word that he used yesterday so eloquently in his post-game interviews that it was a microcosm. This past year sort of is a lot of people will tell you you can't do things or be pundits or be critical and all this kind of stuff. And at the end of the day, just keep your head down, do your job, have a great attitude, be kind to people. And all that matters is the people in your locker room, the people that are signing your checks, the the, the hunts, the ownership groups, and those Feech, guys that yep. continue to believe in you and just do your job and let everyone else, the noise outside, like that's sort of how I feel. Like there's a lot of external noise sometimes for in whatever profession you're in. And going back to even the question that we had in our pregame, like how do you remain confident when people are mean or people are whatever, like just stay true to who you are. And those guys on that team, like even Travis, like getting up in Andy Reid's face, I was shocked when I saw that because it's like Travis is emotional, like, right? We've seen that before, but it's kind of like, oh, but they're good. Like, that's the relationship that they can have. And that's a, that's the respect that they have for one another, that that's their own business, you know? So I don't know. I just think it's really cool to be this far into this career. And I never, ever take it for granted. But just, I don't know, just who cares what the outside says? Just keep winning and be kind on your way to doing it. So this has been really fun for me this past year to watch the Taylor Swift and Travis thing. Um, Got to be honest, and- we we kind of asked for it, you know? Back in August, you I'll know, be honest. Guys, look, it's just because they're good people, they're great. and I want good things to happen to good people. And we're good people, um, and I really want to go to the London show, Carissa. <laughs> I mean, let's talk about it. I my somebody asked me last night at our little Super Bowl we're thing. Going. We're going. What do you? What do you? Yeah, what are you I mean, even wearing? Ah. I am wearing a like I love Taylor shirt. Like I'll wear like I'm I'm wearing. I don't care if I look like, but I have to be comfortable because I'm going to dance the whole time. 
she is in heels dancing for three hours. Oh, but I can't can do, do that. it. Well, I'm gonna do it. You're wearing I'm gonna, heels. I am. I'm gonna wear heels. I'm gonna wear sparkles. I'm gonna do I'm the whole sparkles. thing. I'm doing it all. I've never made a friendship bracelet. <coughs> but I'm gonna do it. I want all the yeah. bracelets. All the bracelets. We can take these off. By the way, we already have enough yeah, I bracelets. Huh? But we I need want to get more. the new thing. We need new bracelets. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's really great. I'm really proud of you too. And we are um we're long into this here uh career and I feel very, very grateful for that. But I hope it keeps going. A lot like the Chiefs hope that they're, <laughs> you know, they're back to back. I hope that we can just do this forever. Well, we have Super Bowl next feel year. Like a job. We do have Super Bowl next year. They just came out with the logo too. Did you see it? Um, ex- uh-uh, I haven't Hold seen on, it. I'll show it to you right now. It's pretty cute. Okay, while well, you look that up. Um, so then that also means, and I know we're probably almost out of time, but um, I hope that you guys know. Cute. And if I haven't said it enough. Cletus with the... Very... Oh, it's kind of dark. But yeah, cute. It's I'm in New excited. Orleans. Oh, there you go. The Florida, Florida Lure. Yeah. Florida Lee. Jesus. People in New Orleans are going to be like, Jesus, this gal. Florida Lee. Um, yeah, that's going to be fun. Fun. Very fun. We're on the um, clock. Which means... It's now we're actually off the clock because it's finally an off season for you, even though I know with wear and everything else oh. and your little baby boy, um, you're always busy. But um, to everyone who supports Calm Down Podcast, you guys are awesome. I never take it for granted when we go to games and I like people make signs or like yell that you like this podcast. It means the world to me. And I know it does to you, Aaron. So let's keep it going. Tony Romo and if you said- don't like Taylor Swift. Yeah, calm down. Tony Romo said calm down uh, on the broadcast yes, last night. And I was like, that's a he shout did. out to us. He did say it. Um, so that's it, sister. The 2023 season is in the books. Kudos to you. Take some time off. Um, you and I are actually going to go on a little vacation because yeah. you're always generous and invite us. So um, yeah, that's it. That's all. Karma is my boyfriend. Karma is the guy on the Chiefs. Coming straight home Congrats. to me. We're not signing off totally. We're just signing off on our season. But yeah, calm down is not ending. And calm down if you want it to. So keep the questions coming. You anonymous folks, we love you so much. Let us know how things all panned out, especially with that mean girl. Ew, rude. Yeah. And let me know where you want me to go because I can help back you up. I got Mm -hmm. some time now. It's the off season. You with your words like knives in your hand and hold that they use against me. Against me. You. You. Calm Down with Aaron and Carissa is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.